Hello everyone, and welcome to a quick Unity tutorial about scene crossfades in Unity C Sharp. So, if you've ever looked around for tutorials on how to fade between scenes in Unity, you probably noticed that almost everything tells you about how to do a fade in slash fade out system, i.e. a fade transition that has an intermediary black or white screen. On the other hand, there's virtually nothing about an actual crossfade, where the two images get blended like this. So today, let's have a quick look at how to create such a system in Unity, thanks to a bit of c -sharp. To implement our scene crossfade feature, we will rely on two main tools, the multi-scene workflow and the rendering of the active camera as an image. In a nutshell, the idea here is to do the following. In addition to our two separate example scenes, the ones we want to transition between, we will also have another abstract scene that is always present in the background. This scene will simply consist in a canvas-based UI and a script to load up our various scenes using Unity's scene management package. Then, when the player clicks the button in our menu that brings up the game scene, we will take a screenshot of this current main menu render and put it in an image that covers the entire screen. This image will be in the shared canvas UI of our abstract scene. Then we will unload the menu scene and load up the game scene asynchronously in the background. And finally, when everything is ready, we will have the opacity of the full screen image transition down from 1 to 0 to reveal a new scene. This way, the players will be under the impression that the main menu crossfades into the new game scene. I do have to point out, however, that this technique will only feel right if the first scene we exit from, for example here the menu, is a still image, or something close to a still image. Otherwise, the players will see that we suddenly freeze the frame, and they will notice the transition. It's not bad per se, but it's worth keeping in mind if you plan on having some idle animation in your menu, for example. The multi-scene organization is fairly easy to set up in Unity. First, let's take care of our abstract shared scene. I'll rename our current sample scene to something like core and empty it completely. Then I'll create a UI inside it and add a raw image to it. Remember that because we won't be using sprites but textures, we have to use a raw image instead of the usual image. Also, here, don't forget to bring the canvas to the front by setting its sort order value to the maximum, and then turn off the Raycast target property of the image so it doesn't block the mouse clicks in all the scenes. After that, I'll add another empty object on which I'll add a new C-sharp script called Scene Loader. We'll leave it clean for now and finish up preparing our scenes. All we have to do is create two arbitrary simple scenes to test out our feature. To begin with, I'll just make one basic menu scene with a play button to load the game scene and a quit button to exit the play mode or close the application, and then I'll create another scene, the game scene, with a few random assets for the scenery and a UI button to exit back to the main menu. Ok, now that our assets are ready, let's go back to our scene loader script and handle the unloading and reloading of our scenes. For now, I won't burden myself with the crossfade, and I'll just implement the basic logic of switching between two scenes. I'm going to make a singleton instance of this class, since it's unique and global to our entire project, and this will make it easier to access from other scripts, and then I'll create a load scene function to have an easy way to trigger the switch. In here, I'll just check which scene I need to load and start its asynchronous loadup, and then when it's done, I'll unload the other one. To avoid any trouble with the temporarily doubled audio listener, we can move it to our shared object in the core scene, and remove it from the main cameras in the main menu and the game scenes. We should also remove the redundant event systems in our various scenes, and only keep the one in core. Then remember to ensure that in your build settings, the three scenes are added to the list of scenes to build. Otherwise, the scene manager won't be able to load and unload them. But now it's time to work on a crossfade, and first we have to capture this current image for our transition screen. The idea here is to create a temporary rendered texture to blitz the contents of our camera view in, and then take the pixels inside this rendered texture as an image so we can display it in our UI. 
This can be done with the following code that first gets the resolution of the camera render, creates a render texture of the right dimensions, renders the camera into this render texture, and then copies the pixels to a simple texture 2D before cleaning up everything. We can now call this function when we start our scene switching, and if we expose a reference to the full screen UI image we want to use to hide our transition, set its value to this texture, and then assign our UI row image to the slot in the inspector, we see that as soon as we transition to the second scene, our current render is captured and set into our canvas image. To have the opacity of our transition screen slowly decrease, the easiest solution is to run a coroutine when the loading of our new scene is finished. And inside this coroutine, continuously loop between a full white and opaque color and a fully transparent equivalent. We can of course expose the duration of this fade into our inspector, where the fade duration variable is in seconds. To wrap this up, we just have to actually call our load scene function in the right places in our code. So first, we'll just quickly check whether we currently have a scene to capture, or else bypass the whole fading out thing, which allows us to call our load scene function at the very start when we first run our game. Be careful though, cause our setup requires that we always start the game from the call scene, so that everything exists and is properly referenced. Then we can add some basic manager in our menu scene, to give our two buttons the right callbacks, and similarly we can make a game manager for the game scene and its back to menu button. Now if we try this out, we see that we automatically load up the menu, and then we can easily switch between our two scenes with a nice crossfade. Of course, the cool thing with this crossfade feature is that we can quickly modify it to create other scene transition effects, such as a side push, to which we can even add stylish easing e and ease out twists. But anyway, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial and that you learned a few things to crossfade between your Unity scenes. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you have other ideas of Unity tricks that you'd like to learn, don't hesitate to leave a comment. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you soon for more videos on coding and games.